Good evening. Uh, it is Tuesday, February 4th, and this is the Town Council regular meeting. Madam Clerk. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, all councillors are here except uh, Councillor Melendez, but uh, I think uh, Councillor Zapiri is just momentarily. He's, uh, he's coming, coming back to you. I see okay, him right now. I see him right now. Okay, then here, there you are. Eight, eight, more than a quorum. Thank you. And um, if we could stand for a salute to the flag, and could I ask Representative Whitney, please, to lead us in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We don't have any recognition awards and memorials this evening, and we have no public hearings. However, we do have receipt of citizens' petitions, comments, and concerns. And this evening, um, we have seven people signed up to speak. This is the portion of the council meeting where the council welcomes comments from citizens to address the council. Please sign, I have the seat, sheet here that was signed. Um, when you are recognized, please approach the podium. Clearly state your name and address and speak into the microphone. Each presentation should be limited to five minutes or less, and citizens should, if possible, submit written comments. Presentations should be related to matters pertinent to Groton. Town councilors will only ask questions in order to clarify the speaker's presentation and can respond during the responses to citizens' petitions portion of the meeting. We have Tom Olson followed by Laura Welt, please. Uh, Tom Olson, uh, 188 Crosswinds Drive, and I'm also a member of the Town uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, you have before you today uh, item number 2020-44, Mystic Education Center Development Agreement. Uh, I've read through the agreement. I find that it's uh, very uh, comprehensive and adequate and recommend uh, approval. However, I do, uh, as a follow-on action, as far as in integrating with the Conservation Commission, is that I'm a little concerned uh, in the recital portion the state intends to retain approximately 37 acres portion of the, of the 240 oral school parcel and sell the remaining portion. Uh, with that, the concern that we have is in regard to how this is going to be designated into an open, uh, I understand from reading further in regard to open space, uh, is what type of open space and what kind of communications we're, we're going to be dealing from a town to the state. Is this going to be a par state park like Bluff Point or is it going to be a wildlife management area like you have up at Candlewood Hill? So it's going to be just vacant area with a land easement on it, a conservation easement on it. So some kind of considerations or is nothing going to happen to it? Is this going to be left as a state property that could be further developed? So we're a little concerned from this. Uh, you know, I have that concern and be bringing that to the Conservation Commission, but would like uh, just put that out as far as an area that I think needs further consideration that hasn't really been thought through here, but I agree it's still early at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Laura Welt followed by Scott Westervelt, I believe. Uh, my name is Laura Welt, and I live at 18 Boulder Court, um, which is off of Oral School Road, for those of you who don't know where it is. The fire department didn't know a while ago. Um, I'm here to read a letter that my husband sent to all of you, and we want to make sure that the rest of the, the town hears it. Hello. I will be unable to be at the town council meeting on Tuesday in time for the public comments se session, as I'll be in Avery Point for a lecture. However, I'd like to make you aware of my feelings towards the development of the Oral School property. Last August, when the town officials failed in their attempt to turn Old Mystic into a mixed-use zone, I went to the annex and checked the zoning. I was comforted to see that the portion of the Oral School land adjacent to my property on Boulder Court was still zoned RU80, while the property to the west of Oral School Road was RU20. Both these designations would permit the construction of nice houses. My hope, of course, was that the town would opt for the recommendation they received in 2016 for housing for an aging population. When the current Respeller proposal was put forward, I was shocked, to say the least. 
At a meeting in June 2017, Mr. Bronx said that any development of the oral school should blend with the community. I would submit that the Respiller proposal does not blend in with the existing community, not by a long shot. Last week, the town council, meeting as a committee of the whole, accepted the proposal. Frankly, I felt a sense of betrayal on the part of my elected officials and the planning department. I hope you will take this into consideration during the vote Tuesday evening. Thank you. Scott Westervelt, followed by Melinda Cassier. Good evening. My name is Scott Westervelt. I live at 7 Boulder Court, Mystic, Connecticut. I've got a few um, issues with the development that's going on up at Oral School Road. First of all, uh, the traffic study that was just done, uh, they did it for a few days at the off ramps for the highway, as well as um, Ledgeland and Cal Hill Road, as well as, and Cal Hill Road as well. That has absolute, or excuse me, Oral School Road, that has no real bearing on what really happens during the summer months and all the ex excess traffic that happens there. So taking a couple of days in January doesn't really look like June, July, August, September, and even October. Um, another uh, point as far as the traffic study goes, they're talking about a second access road, but in none of their plans that I've seen, none of the drawings, none of the meetings we've been to, they haven't shown any depiction of what that access road is gonna look like. They're talking about bringing it into Ledgeland Road. Well, it can't exactly be like Five Corners in Groton City because now you've got Cal Hill Road, you've got this new access road, you've got uh, the other side of Cal Hill, Allen and Ledgeland. How are they gonna tie all that into that small intersection? And that is a relatively small intersection. So um, my next comment has to do with the sewer utilization. Their studies indicate that the current utilization is less than 50%. And I agree with that because there are only three houses that are tied to that sewer. I was there when they put the sewer in 30 years ago, and that's not a very big pipe. Now they're talking about adding another 152,000 gallons per day of raw sewage coming down our street right by my house. I live on the corner of Oral School Road and Boulder Court, and that pipe goes right by my house. Um, another 152,000 uh, gallons of sewage a day, kind of, it concerns me, and I'd kind of like to know what the 50% utilization is, how, how many, um, once they do this development, they're saying it's less, still less, less than 50%, but I'd like to know how close to that 50% or if it's actually more than that, and what the design capacity of that sewer was when it went in 30 years ago. Um, and the, um, another part of the RFP indicates that there were improvements to the property already made. I've been there for over 30 years, no improvement has been done to that property for anything at this point. They took down a bunch of buildings and destroyed Oral School Road with all the runoff. They didn't put silt fences in. They had to repave the road because they destroyed it. But they haven't done any improvements to that property in the 30 years I've been there. So these are all concerns of mine. The last concern I have is with the blasting. They indicated that they would send a crew in. They would like to take pictures of the existing properties. My house is all plaster on the second and third level, or excuse me, the first and second level. It's all plaster. I don't, I'm not gonna let anybody come into my house just to take pictures of what's there now. I'll take pictures and provide it to them, but nobody should have access to my house if they wanna take pictures pre-construction. If there is a problem during post-construction, I'll be more than happy to share it with them. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Westerfield. Uh, Lin Melinda Castier, followed by Mike Whitney. Melinda Caseri, 280 Indigo Street, Mystic. I'm a member of the RTM representing District 5 and I'm a resident of Fieldcrest. I'm here tonight to represent our constituents, the people who reside in dis uh, District 5, but mainly the residents who will be most impacted by the development of the former oral school property. During a recent District 5 caucus and during the days leading up to the meeting, residents reached out to me with their questions and concerns. Many residents worry about over-trafficked roads, the construction process and the impact of bringing 750 living spaces and potentially 1,200 new residents to an isolated area on a small, narrow, quiet road. I share some of their concerns about traffic and pedestrian safety. However, I'm also here tonight as a resident that looks forward to economic development in our community. 
I am here because I recognize the potential in taking a decaying property that is becoming more subject to vandalism and arson every day and turning it into a vibrant, useful space for families in our town. I think the developer is listening to us and I urge the neighbors to continue to reach out to their team with suggestions and ideas. They're listening and they've shown proof of that by already adapting plans based on feedback from residents. Despite any of our worries, the rumors about the project, and even our hopes that I think it is important to remember, remember that this project is in its very earliest stages, which is why there's so much fear of the unknown. I am thankful to live in a community where our town council is actively working towards economic development and working on sales of the many vacant properties around town. However, I'm also asking for understanding. As a resident near this property, I think it is reasonable to understand the frustration and confusion of people who have lived in the proximity of a building that has remained completely vacant for nearly, nearly a decade. Tonight, I would simply like to propose that we find a way to be more communicative about upcoming meetings and informational sessions so that we may all learn about this project and its benefits together. Transparency and the dissemination of information is always beneficial. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Whitney, followed by Roseanne Katowski. Thank you. Mike Whitney, uh, 112 Deerfield Bridge Drive. I'm also RTM from District 5. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the developers for coming to our, our uh, District 5 caucus. Uh, they were uh, very open and have been throughout about uh, listening to uh, concerns, answering questions, and, uh, and just meeting with the community in general. Uh, to me, an overarching concern is that the grand scope of the project, how big it is, and how well, and maybe not well, that fits in with the existing community. Um, this mismatch was anticipated by the 2016 uh, feasibility analysis commissioned by the town of Groton. And it notes that, in quotes, uh, high traffic volume induced uh, uses will be incompatible with surrounding properties in this, uh, and again, quotes, quiet residential neighborhood. Furthermore, it notes that the site is less ideal for apartment housing, targeting a, targeting a price sensitive younger demographic, as this market typically prefers to be located in community centers and downtown areas. The proposed project does partially address this last issue by including amenities and entertainment options on site, but is still removed from, from downtown areas. Uh, the analysis and also the RFP for this uh, project both envision my reading of it is really mostly renovation and reuse of the existing buildings. Uh, the proposed project adds many new residential buildings, which collectively uh, increase the building footprint to several times uh, what it currently is. And so that's, I think, a much larger scope than was envisioned by the analysis or, or even the RFP. And then moving forward, uh, one of the next steps will be uh, through zoning, and as noted, it, it certainly is inconsistent with RU80, and so the changes will have to be made. Uh, and then through the zoning process, I, th I think it should be paid attention to setbacks of the new buildings from existing neighbors, because some of these apartments are going to be, actually they're four stories tall, and they really could loom over uh, the neighborhood of Boulder Court. And because it is a quiet residential neighborhood that's rather sparsely populated, it's really only a few residents overall of our town. It's a small community. But they're the ones that are going to be most impacted. I mean, we will in District 5 because of the traffic as well. But I encourage the town uh, to listen very closely um, to, to their concerns and do everything they can to, to address them as, as we go through the, the zoning process. And that goes along with communicating times of meetings so they can be present at um, zoning meetings and everything. Because even as someone who's involved in the government, it's hard to keep track of when meetings are, when, when, when these items are going to come up at different meetings. And I think it's really important to involve them. And, I, and really, I'd say overall, um, follow the, the lead of the developers and being proactive about uh, community engagement uh, in this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Roseanne Katowski, followed by Bruce Flax. Roseanne Katowski, 24 Ann Avenue, Misty, Connecticut, RTM District 5. My comments are regarding transparency and what information should be discussed in public versus executive session regarding the Mystic Oral School. 
at the town council meeting on January 28th. After the motion was made to sign the contract with the developer, Councilor Zapiri stated, quote, we've heard the presentations from this very same group before an executive session, and we have been enthusiastic about this development. I, I, I don't know that we need to ask any questions. I know I don't have to ask any questions. Unfortunately, all those enthusiastic discussions were not in public. They were in secret, in executive session. As I have stated many times, there has been zero transparency regarding the Mystic Oral School property for the past four years. Everything has been done in executive session with no inclusion of the neighbors. At the town presentation months ago, only three questions were allowed and then the discussion was shut down. My concern, which was repeatedly shared with the planning department for the past four years, was that the neighbors would be presented with one final done deal scenario, love it or like it, with zero in opportunity for input, which is exactly what has happened. Then we learned that there were 17 proposals that the town had to choose from. I would like to request to see those proposals. As you know, at our District 5 caucus, we invited the developer to have a discussion with the neighbors. During the two hours with the developer, we learned more than we have from the town in four years. At what point is the town council planning to speak to the neighbors? Hopefully, Councilor, Mel Councilor Melendez, who is at our caucus, has communicated the level of the neighbor's concern regarding this project to the rest of the council in public. Moving forward regarding transparency in this project, what is the status of the pro project going forward regarding the use of executive session? At what point do we reach a threshold where there are no more conversations in executive session? Is it now? For example, it appears the traffic study has begun. When the information is available from the traffic study, how will it be disseminated? Will it be presented in executive session? There are more questions and concerns right now than answers. And it is past time for the town council to have a conversation with the neighbors. The carrot in the deal for the town appears to be the Pratt building. But is the, Pratt, but is the town operating the Pratt building a good idea? Recently, one of my constituents shared with me concerns regarding this building. Can the town actually afford to maintain the Pratt Building? Currently, do parks and rec fees maintain the Spicer House, the Senior Center, or the Community Center? There will have to be an increase in the budget so taxes will go up. My biggest concern at this point is that the project is way too big. It's not a, a village, it's a mega development. Other issues for me are, I do not support the use of tax incentives to the developer or taxpayers funding infrastructure upgrades to support 750 apartments and many businesses. Also, I do not think that the Oral School Road should be the main entrance to the development. The main way in should be a new road off of Cow Hill Road as originally proposed. It is easy to support something that will, not, that will not affect your daily life or your part of town. This development will absolutely alter and affect the northeast section of Groton permanently. The town council is the only protection District 5 residents have from overdevelopment. Please reconsider this project. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce Flax. Good evening, councilors, Madam Mayor. Uh, Bruce Flax, 632 No Ink Road in Mystic. I'm here as a great, um, I'm here as a chairman of the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce, um, an RTM member, citizen of Groton, uh, to express support for the Mystic Education Center and urge the council to permit the town manager to execute the development agreement with Respler Homes, the preferred developer for that place. I'm encouraging the council to approve the agreement uh, we recognize that it does not approve the project, but simply allows the process to continue. Like any other project, the redevelopment will need to go through Groton's permitting process, including land use and zoning public hearings. It does appear to be a thoughtful and needed development, given all the new EB employees coming this way. We know that young professionals are looking for this kind of housing, and we don't have sufficient inventory for it right now. We want to keep those employees here in our area as they put down roots. In moving through the process, I ask both the council and developer to communicate with residents and businesses and ensure that all voices are heard. This is an exciting development for the citizens of Groton, 
the town council and the state of Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you, and that's everyone that has signed up. Is there anyone else here who has not signed up that would like to speak? If so, please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Hi, John Goodrich, 74 Irving Street, Mystic, Connecticut. So my concerns with the development are, frankly, the developer. I've done a lot of research on him. Can't find where he's ever done a project like this. He's done basically track homes, condos. Um, anybody that knows real estate knows that an apartment building, which is built and held, is a much different business model. I'd like to say what Roseanne said. I'd like to see the other proposals that were turned down and see why he is the favored developer. Um, the other thing that concerns me is with most commercial and apartment buildings, they're held for a certain period of time, they're off, especially when their condition level falls off. Um, since Restful Homes has no history of how long they're gonna hold this property, why are we putting Brownfield money in, TIF money in, town money in, and we don't know how fast it's gonna get sold off. I also agree that I don't think it's, it's too big for the area, um, and we don't know any of the impact. Second of all, Mr. Resper is quoted in a paper saying he doesn't want the Pratt building because it's undevelopable. Undevelopable costs him too much money. So giving it to us is a Trojan horse. He's giving us a building that he doesn't want to put the money into so that the town has to maintain it. I don't think it's a good use of taxpayer funds. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Okay. We are on to Roman numeral six, responses to citizens' petitions, comments, and concerns. Councilor Bordelon. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out to speak. As always, it takes a lot to come up here and, and, and advocate for your part of town, right or wrong, or your issue. Um, everyone may not agree, but your voice is just as important as anybody else's, and that's one of the reasons I got involved, is I think it's important, and I wish we had the public comment more often, but that's another topic. Um, I do share your concerns. Um, I was just recently elected to this position, and I was appointed towards the end, and this was already in the process, so I'm still working through it. Um, I, I hear the concerns of the size. Um, I think it's great for Groton. I think it's gonna be wonderful for our economic development. I also hear the concerns of the road entryways over there, as well as the sewage, and I've heard that as uh, um, also, looking at it from the standpoint of the environmental open space, what will that look like? Um, so there's a lot of questions unanswered, looking at how the planning and zoning are gonna utilize this. I, I've heard the concerns about the use of the money of the TIF, what that will look like. Um, once again, the official contract negotiations at the Pratt Building have not been fully addressed and put forward um, to us uh, as a council yet. So um, right now, this is just as uh, uh, Representative Flack stated, um, a, a stance to move forward to keep going with negotiations, but it's not a final stance. Um, I also am watching it. I, I, like I said, I think you know anything new can be challenging, but we do need to respect the area and the people who live in the area, but also be, have an open mind to look at new things coming and how uh, the advances of um, this town and the needs of this town um, moving forward. So once again, I, I encourage you to keep reaching out, uh, emails or whatever, um, however you want to get, reach out to me. Um, I, I think that there's a lot all in one here. As far as the transparency part, um, once again, uh, you know, some things in uh, executive session. Um, I have addressed the fact that I feel that some things could possibly, I was asking, when, when can it be put forward um, to the public? So. I, I am also pushing for that as well. I think that if there's a chance for things that don't have to be, I brought up a suggestion maybe where we could um, have a presentation from a developer or a, a, a group and then they can talk about the parts that they can and then when that is done, then go into executive session for the, the final piece. So once again, I, you're not going on deaf ears and I, I appreciate everybody's comments. Thank you. Councilor Franco. Thank you for all coming out. Um, I know people have been watching this project and waiting, and um, I'm trying to explain to the town the best that I can that the town is doing it in a different way that's different from what normally towns do, where they just put a property up for sale, and 
anybody can come in and they can purchase it and sit on it <coughs> maybe for 10 or 15 years and it could just lay there defunct. Groton has decided to put our property open for bid, have a selection group that's comprised of numerous people and they come up with a preferred developer. Um, normally when, it, when a property is sold, you won't even know what's going on that property until somebody pulls a permit and that's when people find out what's actually going there. The way I think our economic development and planning department put it out there was you're hearing about this way sooner than you would have in a normal process. So this is being brought to the public. We had a public he um, input meeting, or not input, but educational meeting on what was going to happen where the developer came and told everybody this is what our plans are. It was in the very initial phase where normally you won't even find out until they pull a permit. So you're finding out early. And I will tell you that things in executive session, I mean, there's negotiations going on. People are trying to acquire property that these things can't be out in the public. These are not just meant to be secrets that we're holding on to ourselves. There's actual negotiations that are happening. And um, so now that this is out there and they've brought it to the public, you hear it, you see what's going on. There are a lot of concerns and I have concerns myself but this is only the beginning stage. I mean, there's going to be <clears throat> planning and zoning and there's gonna be public hearings where the neighbors are all gonna be sent notices by mail inviting you to these public hearings so you can come, that you're actually invited to speak at these public hearings for the town to hear you. Um, so as I've spoken to many people about this and I've received emails and texts and I'm trying to keep in communication with everybody and trying to get them to understand that we're in the very initial phase of this and things could change. Um, the road may be different, maybe access points may be changed. Um, maybe the part on Allen Street, who knows with the traffic study, if that will have to change to accommodate the different traffic. Um, but these are all things in the very beginning stages and we have to wait for some answers and to figure out what those answers are gonna be. So I think this process is gonna take the next year. So I would, um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming again and I hope you will have an open mind and try and find solutions and what could work for the best in that area and be open-minded about it. Thank you. So Mr. Burt wanted to say something and then Councilor Overy. I just wanted to remind everyone that this is actually state property, not town property. We were invited to, we had an agreement to help market it and to participate in the selection of the developer, but the state was the ultimate decision maker and uh, the property has already been sold uh, to Mr. Respler and his group. So. Thank you for clarifying that. And Councilor Overy. Um, I just wanted to mention the meetings that have gone on were really your economic department and your planning department doing the due diligence of interviewing people that were interested in doing this proposal. And at that point, there's a lot of, uh, after the initial uh, presentation, uh, they have to see, does this person have the ability to truly do it? You know, there's a lot, a lot of things that have to be looked at. What are their reputation? You know, how well do you think they'll work with the town? There's a lot of things that are personal to these developers that are just not something that you make public. Uh, I think you all have met in business transactions and you know that there's parts of it uh, that are very private. We've gone past that point now and everything can be public. Um, and, and I think that you'll, you'll see that. But the way that the economic development department had set this up is, is really uh, excellent for the town. We're not selling land so that somebody can just sit on it. We're selling land so that there'll be building and a return to the town. And if you can keep that in mind, I think we can work together to make things come so that Everybody can be somewhat satisfied. It's not a perfect world. We will not make everybody happy. But uh, we have a very, very cooperative developer. Uh, he has the, uh, uh, the background that, that really is needed. And uh, fortunately, the state felt the same way. So they were willing to go forward. And that's pretty unusual to do. 
if you were to look at Waterford and what they've gone through with a beautiful piece of property that in 20, 30 years, nobody's been able to come to any kind of an agreement on it. Unfortunately, when we had the opportunity, we were able to put it together to move forward. So a little patience, a little understanding of what's trying to be done, and I think this council will do a very good job for you. I know planning will, and I know economic development will. Thank you. Mr. Burt? I just want to clarify, there's a purchase and sale agreement signed and a lease signed, uh, so they're in the due diligence period, and they uh, are getting ready to fix roofs, and, you know, leaking roofs there, that type of thing. Thank you. All right. Councilor Zaperi. I, I just wanted to point out that we've we've tried to we've been trying to move toward development of the town of Groton. We developed TIF, uh, we have developed TIF zones for tax incentive financing for uh, uh, people to improve properties uh, for business purposes in various parts of Groton. We are trying to market the old school properties that we have around the town, and we have successfully marketed some people in in the uh, city of Groton know that uh, that uh, Groton High School is being uh, developed at this point for an industry that will probably employ about 80 people. The development of Groton is extremely important <clears throat> because we're too big to take a rural attitude that we can just let things slide. We have to address problems at increasing costs. And to do that, we need to have a broader tax base. We have a, 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 a washout of a road in, in the city of Groton, and we were just talking, if you were here for the, the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting earlier, of a $316,000 cost there. We started talking about resilience of the town of Groton in the face of a riding, uh, rising uh, ocean uh, surface. So the, the, the supposedly uh, 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 Mayor uh, Hedrick uh, said today that uh, the, the expectation is 20 inches in the next 30 years that the sea will rise. Each of these things poses a special threat. And in order to meet that threat, we have to have many hands, many bodies pulling together. If, I don't think the current tax ba base can afford to do the things that we have to do. And so we have to increase that tax base by developing the town. This is only one of, the num of a number of projects that we've been considering. And I w hope that you can all support the idea that your mill rate won't go up so much uh, to accomplish the things that are the challenges that we face uh, if there are more of us and if there are more taxpayers. So that's what we're faced with and I, and, uh, I hope that you can see those things as we look at uh, the various development uh, projects. Thank you, Councillor Zapari. Councillor Heath. Uh, for, thank you everyone for coming out. I want to assure you your um, concerns are being heard. Um, in fact, we're in the step of the process where we need to hear those concerns. Um, I first want to address transparency. Um, as we go through the negotiation process, this has been going on for years from even before when I was on the council. Um, and it's a discussion that we have every time we go into executive session. We hate going into executive session. We like to talk. Uh, most of us do anyways. <laughs> Uh, we're politicians, we do that. Um, but um, moving on to the, the community, by hearing, uh, by listening to what you say, we can help develop, we can help this development move forward in the right direction. Um, so we've got basically uh, an outline of where, what we can do with this uh, current um, property, which um, for years has been vacant and in the future is going to be occupied either by this or something else if this weren't to go through. Uh, so there is going to be change. Uh, but by hearing especially the traffic concerns, uh, those are the kinds of things that we will work through um, and pay a little bit more attention to. Uh, so I just wanted to thank everyone for coming out and uh, remind you there's a sheet in the back on the table over there that has a lot of numbers on it that I think um, go a long way to helping people in the town support this project. A um, couple of the things uh, that I think are interesting. 
there will be 40,000 square feet of um, public recreation space as well as, as 37 acres of open space. Um, while Deep was in the room with us discussing this during the task force, uh, this, um, I, I don't know how much I can actually say because again, you know, they're, then don't this say was it. negotiations. Right. <laughs> um, but if, if they were planning on one thing, they had to change it because Deep is uh, looking to protect this property. So uh, as this process continues, you, we'll, we'll find out more uh, that we can share. And then of course, um, 750 residential units that are geared towards the younger people that are coming to work at EB, the engineers, uh, sort of the, the kids coming out of college. I think uh, you have to think of it as, do you wanna have uh, a town where you can uh, uh, sort of accommodate uh, some people from out of town, I guess, uh, that would make it a, a more interesting and vibrant community. Um, and uh, you know, I think, it, I think it's good. Um, for the future of Groton, not to mention the $3.8 million in annual tax revenues uh, that we could potentially get. Uh, so just make sure you grab that sheet. Thank you. All right, great. So we are to Councillor Bumgardner. Would you move the consent calendar, please, sir? I'll make a motion to move the consent calendar. Yes. Do we do it afterwards if I have an issue with something written in the minutes? Let him move it first and get it on the floor. Then we'll then we'll deal with the question in the minutes. Um, Councilor Bumgardner, move the consent calendar. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bordelon. Councilor Parker. On the January seventh meeting minutes, on page eight, which is town five. Page eight currently in our packet, but page five. Mm -hmm. It said Council Parker stated that she attended the SECT TV annual party featuring local artists and the Safe Futures event. I said I received information about tours. They conduct tours and you can go onto their website and they do have them on Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Not that I went to a tour. I went back and reviewed the tape. Okay. So. You need me to repeat it. No, yep. we don't repeat it. Okay. But may, may I just say that uh, for, for, for everyone's knowledge on the town council, I know that you know that this portion of, the, of your meeting is to bring forth work for the council, not where all the meetings that you've gone to. That's we're, we're not read, there read yet. Your, we're, we're not we're on no, the no, consent calendar. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Um, did you have anything else, Councilor Parker? No, just that section. I just, because okay. I was asked to bring that information forth and I brought it forth, so I want the public to read it correctly. Thank you. Councilor Franco. Um, on page nine of our packet, which is page six, um, it says on the one, fifth paragraph, Councilor Bordelon, um, Regarding the Mystic Bridge, it's actually, I believe, the North Stonington Bridge located in Old Mystic. And it's notated in here as the Mystic Bridge, which there is a That's difference. That's what she said. Though. Okay. Um, also, on our page 12, which is the packet page 9, um, on the vote, it says um, Councillor Heed was in the motion, but it's not notated with an X. Whether he voted yes or no. The table. Yes. yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, I would have voted yes. The table on page 12. Yes. With the vote. He's blank. There's no indication of how he voted. I've got, are you talking about the last vote? For adjournment? Page 12? No. Oh. Our page 12, which oh. is page 9 of the minutes. Oh, page 9. There's no X for Conrad Heed voting yes. <laughs> they made the motion, but it didn't. Okay, I'll, I'll fix that. Also, um, on page 12, um, it's noted that Councilor Bordelin had voted no in the second graph there, and so it was actually me. 
This is page 15 of your packet. Yes, page, page 12, 12 of the minutes. minutes. Page and which 15. one, Councillor Franco, there's two votes on that page. I report motion to adjourn. The, yeah, adjournment, and it was actually Councillor Bordelin had voted yes, and Councillor Franco voted no. I also had voted oh, no. Oh, you voted no as well? Yes. I'm sorry. I only heard, I only heard one. No. So, so okay. both of us voted no. Okay. Okay. You can, thanks. Clarify it wasn't marked down there. Thank you well. very much. Anything else on the, um, I, I just want to go on the consent calendar and thank all the volunteers who are doing various appointments and reappointments and thank them for serving the town. And I'd also like to thank all the contributors. We have some people making very generous donations for um, various funds in the town. So thank you very much. Councilor Zaperi. I, I, I agree that we should acknowledge the contributions made by people who not only pay their taxes, but eating up a little bit more or quite a bit more in many cases uh, to uh, assist various functions within the town. And uh, I, Frankly, I don't think we should pass over these lightly. I think we should acknowledge these people for their gifts and at least read their names. Uh, and, uh, uh, but that's, that's uh, my opinion. Uh, take it for what it's worth. Thank you. So in, in our minutes, you will find it in, in the agenda. This is on page 19 this evening, a special trust fund contributions. And we have two pages of people that have contributed very generously to the town. Any other discussion? Could we read those? Would you like them read now? I think it would be. I think it would be appropriate. Yeah. Kucho Donuts, Arlene Atwood, Katrina Burkaw, uh, Groton Elks, Marianne Groove, the Insurance Professionals of Eastern Connecticut, Thomas McLaughlin, Mallory Musante, the Newcomers Bowling League, Northern Lights, Barbara Palm, Red Hats, David Rose. Janice and Albert Rudolph, the Senior Citizen Club. Ralph and Diana Stanzioni. Two anonymous donations. Dow, the Mystic Women's Club, RNW Heating, and Schulman. So thank you very much. I would especially like to thank the one on the very top line. Would you like to? Mm -hmm. Would you like to say that? <laughs> I, I read it, but if you want to add, go for it. No, I just, I think I would like to say a special thank you to um, Kuto Donuts. I know it's been a difficult time for her and for her to give us a donation. I really do appreciate it. C-U-T-O, I'm not exactly sure of the pronounce. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, thank you. Um, all in favor of moving the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously with eight counselors. Communications and reports? Councilor Baumgartner. Um, I attended the electric boat legislative breakfast um, Monday morning, very informative. Um, and uh, that is all. Councilor Parker. Um, I attended the U.S. Coast Guard event. Well, actually, I attended three things. Um, for Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, birthday, I attended St. John's event that was open to the public. Um, they put on a very nice um, tribute to him. And then on the Wednesday, the same week, the Coast Guard put on an event. Um, Councillor Heed and I attended, as well as uh, the public, where they had viewings of history throughout the Coast Guard and a nice tribute to Dr. King. Thank you. Councillor Franco. I uh, received numerous emails and discussions and had numerous discussions regarding the Mystic Rural School property. I also attended the Beautification Committee, um, where we are having an event on February 16th at 2 p.m. at the Grill 92 at Fairview. And our town historian, Jim Streeter, will be putting on a presentation regarding Broughton landmarks, old and new. And we're very excited. It's our first really big fundraiser. So we're hoping people come out and participate. And we're having a raffle items and um, businesses around town have donated some gifts gift certificates and it's very nice of them so um come on out on february 16th two o'clock it's a sunday so 
That's it. Thanks. Councilor Heath. Nothing to report. Councilor Ober. No, I'll just reiterate what Rachel was saying, but it is $20 to get through the door. <laughs> As you say, it's a fundraiser. <laughs> But uh, we got quite a few items from the businesses in town for the silent auction. Uh, we'll be having wine flowing, and Jimmy Streeter does an excellent job with his presentations about Broughton. So it should be interesting for anybody that might like to join us. Councilor Bordelon. Um, I'll just second what uh, Councilor Franco stated. I've received numerous uh, emails regarding the Mystic Oral School. Also, um, some communications regarding Northeast Academy and the um, air quality, um, but not just the air, also the use um, of the um, playground and playscape there and just overall use. Also, some issues were brought to light possibly at Catherine Kolnowski, but I'm still looking into those, some possibly similar to uh, Northeast Academy. Um, once again, that's some communications I received and I'm still looking into those. Councilor Zapari. No report. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to give a brief update. I attended golf advisory last evening. Um, a couple of issues. There were some trees that um, neighbors brought to the attention of the parks director and the parks commission. And um, we brought in an arborist and many of those trees are going to need to come down. They're deemed to be unsafe. So. Um, they worked with Grant Utilities on removing some of them. Uh, staff is going to remove the bulk of the trees, but there will be some that will be need, uh, need to be taken down. Um, it was a good January as far as greens fees. They're working on marketing. There's a new reservation system in place that has been very successful, and many of the golfers are moving over there. Um, they will be coming to us to approve the new rates for the next season. So golf advisory uh, by way of Mr. Barry will be bringing that information to the town council. I just wanted to note in case anyone is interested in attending tomorrow evening, the town council, board of ed and RTM, uh, RTM education committee will be meeting here in this room at 630. And we did this last year. Um, it, we thought it went well last year. It's where we're just gonna talk about the budget and expectations, concerns, issues, and it worked very well last year to um, kind of air things out before we got in the middle of all the budget deliberations. So that's tomorrow night in CR1 at the Annex at 6.30. Clerk of the Representative Town Meeting. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Mayor. Uh, the uh, RTM uh, met on January 8th. Uh, where they had a presentation from the Conservation Commission, led by Commissioners uh, Kristen DeSanti and Larry, uh, Larry Dunn, followed by a lively discussion. Um, the RTM passed the resolution appropriating 25000 from uh, FYE 2020 CIP replacement sidewalk construction uh, to, uh, to the Park Improvements uh, Compliance um, Fund for CIP. So that was a vote of 31 in favor, four opposed. Um, there, uh, we also received a resignation from Representative Nancy Driscoll from the 4th District. Um, this seat's filled by uh, a registered Democrat uh, by a caucus of the uh, town, um, the RTM from the 4th District, uh, all members of the 4th District, remaining members. Um, the RTM will have their next meeting February 12th at the Groton Senior Center at 7.30, and they will have an opportunity to take up the ordinance um, with the uh, single-use plastics restrictions if they so choose. Thank you. Uh, Clerk of the Council. Uh, oh boy, lots of things going through uh, with um, uh, the upcoming presidential primaries. We are writing for the uh, uh, announcement on, on the 12th of February by the Secretary of State of those that seem to be candidates. <laughs> it's, it's really that, that, because we won't have any primaries, really that many primaries under, uh, throughout this, the country. So we'll have a list of those that are thought of as uh, contenders for the upcoming race. And that will be, uh, those, those are given to the 90 day, 45 day ballots. So, so it's a, basically just a blank sheet of paper with these candidates that they're allowed to vote, you know, vote for. So, and as soon as we get a real list, we send those. So. Thank you. Town manager? Uh, lots of budget meetings between with departments. So let's take up my last week. Um, so let the fun begin. Um, 
We did have uh, Cindy Landry, me and some other staff had a conference call with our uh, financial advisor today looking at refinancing three bonds. Um, depending on where the rates are, when it goes through, it could be a savings per year of between 28000 and uh, 80000 a year, uh, over 900000 over the life of the bonds. So we're looking to, uh, to probably wrap that in in April when we do the next school bond. We'll probably do them at the same time. But so hopefully rates will stay stable or even go lower. So we'll see what happens. Um, okay. And if at the last minute rates jump for some reason, we could cancel at the last second. So uh, we are working on that. Uh, if the North Stonington Bridge was mentioned earlier. I was just going to say I, it, that's going to be going to the Stonington Board of Finance soon. I, someone told me they thought they were going to meet on February 19th, but that's not confirmed. So you, you need to look up that meeting time for sure. But I'm hearing it's going to be a hard lift to, to get them to fund uh, their portion of the bridge. So if people are really interested in it, they should reach out and attend those meetings. Thank so, you. That's all I have. Uh, we have no department heads, superintendent, or members of the board here. We'll be talking to them tomorrow night. Uh, there are no committee reports, temporary rules. Anything to report, Councilor Aubrey? No, uh, we meet, uh, I believe it's next week prior to our council meeting. And we have a couple of things we'll be, uh, be going over. Thank you. Personnel and appointments? Chairman Melendez um, is not here, but Councilor He, do you have anything for us? Yeah, well, we elected Juan Melendez to be the chair. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we reappointed several people. Uh, and then we also appointed two new members, Hugh Barton to the Water Pollution Control Authority. Uh, and Angela McGurk was appointed to the Parks and Recreation Commission. So we voted on that tonight. Okay. We will be voting on that. And then uh, regular no, rules first. committee, anything, Councilor Heed? Um No. Thank Nothing you. To report. Um, so we are on to item Roman numeral 10, new business, and I would at this time entertain a motion to suspend the rules in order to move item 2020441, Mystic Education Center Development Agreement and Project Overview, up in the business. Um, is there a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. So moved. moved by Bumgardner, seconded by Obrey. Um, debatable, Madam Clerk? No. Nope. All those in favor of suspending the rules in order to move Mystic Education Center up on the agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. So we are on item 2020-441, Mystic Education Center Development Agreement and Project Overview. And this is page 25 in your packet. And Councilor Parker, I believe, or are we starting with Councilor Bumgarden? Okay, so Councilor Parker, please. Resolution to enter into a development agreement with Vespler Homes LLC for the Mystic Education Center property, whereas the Town of Groton's Office of Planning and Development Services, OPDS, has been working with the State of Connecticut on the sale and redevelopment of the state-owned property at the Mystic Education Center, formerly Mystic Oral School, and whereas Vespler Homes was provided preferred developer status for this project after completion of a thorough RFP and vetting process by state and local participants, and whereas the state of Connecticut and Respola Homes have signed a purchase and sales PNS agreement and have finalized a lease agreement for the property, and whereas in order to further advance the project and to document future, future direction between the town and Respola Homes, the town desires to formalize the partnership and project framework through a development agreement now, therefore, be it resolved that the town council hereby authorizes the town manager to enter into a development agreement with Westport Homes, LLC, for the Mystic Education Center. I so move. Second. second. Moved by Parker and seconded by Bordelon. Uh, Mr. Burke, did you want Mr. Reiner to? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Mr. Reiner could come up, please. Um, Mr. Reiner is going to uh, restate what we talked about in Committee of the Whole, where you ran through the quite extensive list, the timeline. If you could just give us a brief rundown of that, please. Sure. Uh, good evening. John Reiner, Director of Planning and Development Services. So one of the items I wanted to cover was, once again, just all of the steps that are still necessary to move this project forward. We've heard that the project is a done deal. It is not. We are very far <coughs> excuse me, from this being a done deal. And what this development agreement does is really help us set the framework for how we move forward. 
And what we're looking at for time frames is during 2020, that's when we expect the planning, the design, the engineering, and the regulatory and other legal approvals for the first phase of the project to begin moving forward. Other major action steps that need to happen for this project to move forward is, <coughs> excuse me, the state of Connecticut needs to have that uh, purchase and sales agreement and lease negotiated and signed with the developer. Fortunately, that has happened. Doing public outreach, Respler has been doing that with um, Corsi and company, and the town has started uh, doing some outreach on this project before we even did the RFP uh, with one of our consulting groups, the Horsley Witten Group. We had a community meeting, I think it was back, um, it might have been 2017-ish, uh, in that vicinity to talk about what the town was actually doing and thinking about with the project. Um, the development agreement approval, which we're talking about tonight, the Pratt Building Reuse Planning and Engineering Study needs to start. Uh, we're actually meeting out on site tomorrow with one of our consultants looking at that building. A Pratt Building Lease Agreement. We haven't even started that agreement nor really spoken about the terms of that agreement. The Zoning Amendment. We haven't written the zoning yet to that would even allow this project to happen. So there's going to be a lot of public input through that process. Once a zoning uh, text and uh, map change happens, then we have to go through the zoning and other land use approval process, planning and zoning commission, inland wetlands, others. Then will be a subdivision of the parcel also before the planning and zoning commission. Land assembly by Respler and other private property owners as they're not only looking at the uh, property owned by the state, but some abutting properties. Tax increment financing master plan, that's something that uh, Respler needs to work with our tax increment financing advisory committee as well as the town council to set the framework for that master plan. Once that master plan is done, a t tax increment financing credit enhancement agreement needs to be negotiated between the town council and the developer. The project design and engineering. At this point in time, all the developer has done is come up with a concept plan based on the best available data they had when we were issuing the RFP some time back. So that's why we're not seeing additional roadway designs yet. That's something that as they're going through their due diligence period now, we will see those items come up in next renditions of plans. Uh, roadway improvements, design and permitting of that. Again, that takes time. Uh, federal Historic Preservation Tax Credits. That's something that Respler is looking to uh, utilize on the uh, main existing oral school building. Uh, a trail system plan development, not only on Respler's property, but also working with DEEP and the state moving forward on that adjacent 37 acres to have some hiking trails uh, on that property, as well as the environmental remediation of the property, which is going to be quite substantial. Uh, and again, I, I just can't stress enough, the development agreement formalizes our partnership. It outlines the process and discusses the cooperative partnership between the developer and the town, and the development agreement does not guarantee any land use, lease, or any other approvals. I, I can't stress that enough. Thank you, Mr. Reiner, for clarifying that again for us. Thank you. Can I, I just, want... Councilor Franco and then Bordelon. So I know Mr. Burt had said earlier that the developer had purchased the property from the state. But that's not exactly what's going on right now. They're leasing it from the state, right? Is right. They've entered into a purchase and sale agreement, basically the due diligence period, and they've entered a lease so they can do some right. securing of the So property. they haven't closed on the property. They no. do not own the property. They are leasing it currently. That's what's going on. Correct. So I just want to clarify because it might have caused a little confusion. And so when the people, when people want to have their voice heard and where in your timeline, are they going to be able to have their voices heard? So I, I think one, we're hearing people now, early in the process, mm -hmm. the council's hearing people. Um, the developer has hired uh, an outreach firm, Corsi and Company, that are directly outreaching to people. They want to hear from abutters, from interested parties, because the more information we get now about people's concerns, those things can be incorporated into the project before they've designed it. They haven't, they don't have to start changing where things are. We're, we're still looking at a concept plan. So I think the more input we get early on in the project, the better off we'll be. Thank you. Um, Councilor Bordelon, Mr. Burt wanted to jump in here. I just wanted to mention piggybacking on that. In terms of like the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission, you can 
if you contact the planning department, you can be put on their agenda receipt list so that you can receive those agendas. I'd imagine the inland wetlands would have a similar thing. So if you want to get on these lists, please contact the planning department. Yeah. And if people have concerns about the project, if they want to send an email, we can certainly uh, take that information in. We can forward it on to the developers. We don't have a lot of answers yet because we're still so early in the project. All we can say is, all right, thank you for your comment, and these are things that we'll pass on to the developer for them to address and for the Planning and Zoning Commission to be aware of once that project starts. So I'm just gonna say it again um, for people that might be listening at home. If you wish to be put on a mailing list or an email, an list, email list, contact the planning department for the town of Groton and they can add you to the list for when these meetings are coming up. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Bordelon. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I feel like the biggest thing that I heard tonight was just information transparency. Um, and one, I start to think of, you know, and I did a little research and even just in my own personal life with other things I'm involved with, I don't know if we can do it for this particular particular project, but maybe for future things that are to come, hopefully, maybe having a link on our website that we're updating from, um, you know, uh, economic development and all that. You could have a link that could say Mystic Oral School, uh, Mystic Educational Development Center versus everyone getting loaded with all these emails, having a thing where this flyer might be on there, okay? A simple way to have a link so someone comes to the town, I might be out of the loop. Not everybody can attend all these meetings. Let's face it, we work, we have kids, we have responsibilities. I am a firm believer in recording all the meetings and fast forwarding to where I want and then taking notes. Not everybody has that time. So let's just think about the average person and the emails coming, I think a more transparent approach, once again, just a suggestion, not something that I think can maybe can be done now, I don't know, but I would entertain the idea to see. We have an IT department, we have a website that's been updated that we spent money on. When new developments and things are changing, having a place where the, the, the taxpayer, the constituents in the town, the people can click, open up a drop-down menu, it'll have who to contact the support group from Wrestler, that their attorney that they hired or the, their support person that does communication. This flyer could be an attachment that's newly added. Um, you can say that we they just passed and had the building uh, officially, they have it in their hands as possession as a lease. And then when that change is over, you know, just keep updating on there. And that might be a nice place where the average person who's not political, who doesn't want to attend these meetings, but truly cares about their area, has a place to go to. And anybody in the area now that's open and transparent, and there's nothing you know, that has to be executive about it, that to me seems like that would help so much um, than having people wait here all night at these meetings and having to speak. And there would be a link where they can comment or you know, different things like that, but just having a resource. And I think that would be very simple and it can be just like an active one and as another property comes on the market, we can click it, you know, and um, once again, that's something I just thought of tonight. Um, well, I've been thinking over a couple days, I've been doing research, but that would be something I think that would help this community. It'd be a place where um, they would see these updates faster, um, uh, and I think that would be very helpful. Um, so it's a suggestion. I would be willing to entertain the idea to see how we can move this forward, and if not for this project, for future projects and future endeavors in our town. Mr. So. Uh, I had previously asked the planning director to start doing a monthly written report on what's been a, happened with it the last month, what's upcoming meetings, but I think that'd be a good, uh, I, I yeah. fully support doing something on the website and I'd like to have you. Yeah. And I just think, there. and I think it would be, and I think that would, for me even, as a town councilor, there's so much to it. I know like we're elected, we're not hired. So I have a full-time job and this is my secondary thing that I do and other people that do this as their job for the town, they're more into this, right? So this would be a nice platform. And it would be nice because you could even set it up where when new things are added, a link might go to your email if you register on there and you'd say, boop, check out the page, there's new things up there. We have the technology, I say let's go for it if we can. I think it'd be great. Yeah. Mr. Reiner. I, I just, uh, we can do our best to try to get information out there. I think up until recently, we didn't have a lot of information to share. Now there's more information that's out there. Uh, but something that I think all the counselors have seen over time is every month, our economic development division does a monthly report. And I think every single month, there has always been at least a paragraph on the Mystic Education Center. Uh, I just got that uh, attached with the Economic Development Commission's agenda for later this week. And that's something uh, that uh, Town Manager Bird had asked 
asked us to really break that out and make sure we're doing a separate report. So that's something we'll make sure um, we kind of pull out of there and bring to people's attention so they don't have to go digging for it. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Reiner. All right. Um, well, we need to see if other counselors wish to just, speak as well. Just because I thought you were wrapping up, I was just being polite, just letting you know that I was wanting to say something. Counselor Zapari? I'd just like to say that I think you're doing a superb job. I think this project is moving Groton forward, and I'm wholly in favor of uh, uh, approving this motion. And if anybody wants, they can quote me on that. <laughs> Do any other counselors wish to speak before Councilor Broadline has her second term? Councilor Broadline. Um, once again, I wasn't disputing the fact of what you are giving. I think sometimes in the comments that I'm getting is for a while there might be nothing to report so having something even if you say no report at this time no change it's a way that people kind of feel like it's still moving what's going on with it there might be times where there is a lapse of months where there's nothing but having that said nothing's changed everything's the same you know it's it's just a nice way to kind of keep the people that it's really affecting that live in that area in the know and so i i would love to see that happen like i said it's but the reports that we get not everybody else gets so Mr. Burt. I just to make people aware of the report that John's talking about for his department that does go in those weekly public email yes. reports that go out. So uh, RTM has received those um, far, as far back as I know. Yes. So, so people are receiving those. And if you aren't aware of it, you can go to our website and find those reports. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Reiner. Thank you, Mr. Burt. Um, I see Mr. Ressler is here with us this evening. I wasn't sure if you wish to speak, sir. You, you certainly do not need to, but I didn't know if you came all this way if you wanted to talk. I wasn't there. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> thank wanna, you. I just want to thank the council for taking the time to come out to the site and look at it, some of the members. I also want to thank just all the time and effort that you're putting into it, that we're putting into it, the town is putting into it, to try to make this into a viable project. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. All right. We are ready to vote on 2020-44 Mystic Education Center Development Agreement and Project Overview. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. Thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, so we're back to the regular order of business, and this is 2020-15 FYE 2019 CAPR on page 21. Councilor Franco, please. Just a moment. I'm Sorry. not prepared. <laughs> Make a resolution accepting the FYE 2019 audit report, whereas the town council has considered the annual audit and the town of Groton's finances covering the fiscal year from July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 2019, and whereas the council has discussed the audit findings with the manager of the audit team from the firm Bloom Shapiro. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Groton accepts and files the FYE 2019 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report, CAFR, the audit reports and the management letter. I so move. Second. Moved by Franco and seconded by Heat. Any discussion on this item? And I will just state for the record that all of these items come before council um, in the committee of the whole. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of 2020-15 FYE 2019 CAPR, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. Uh, 2020-18-1, Town Council 824 referrals. This is on page 22. Councilor Heath, please. I make a resolution referring the sale of the Colonel Ledger at Groton Heights and Pleasant Valley School properties to the Planning and Zoning Commission under CGS Section 8 24. Resolved that the Town Council refers the sale of Colonel Ledger at Groton Heights and Pleasant Valley School properties to the Planning and Zoning Commission pursuant to CGS Section 8 24. I second. second. Moved by Heath and seconded by Zapari. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor of 2020-18 Town Council 824 referrals, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. 2019-805-1, installation of solar panels on new schools. This is on page 23, and we are to Councilor Obrey, please. Resolution authorizing Town Manager John Burrett to execute a letter of intent to the Connecticut Green Bank for an installation of solar panels on Groton Middle School and Cutler Elementary School. Whereas the community is desirous of installing renewable energy on, in the form of solar panels on the, now, on the new school building, 
And whereas the Connecticut Green Bank, a quasi-government organization created by the state statute, has recently, recently implemented the municipal, municipal assistance program, and whereas the Connecticut Green Bank, Green Bank, can't talk tonight, requires the town to enter into a letter of intent to allow the Green Bank to begin design of the solar panel systems for the new Broughton Middle School and the new elementary school on the existing Cutler School site. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town manager, John Burke, is authorized to execute a letter of intent with the Connecticut Green Bank for installation of solar panels on Groton Middle School and Cutler Elementary School and to explore the options for installation of solar panels on the West Side Elementary School and other schools. I so move. Second. Moved by Obrey and seconded by Baumgartner. Councilor Bordelon. Um, I know we discussed this in great length. I like that amended motion adding <coughs> that we'll continue to explore that wasn't originally added. I think that's great. Um, I do not know that this is the perfect solution. Um, I think it's a great start, um, but this will just at least get us into negotiations to see if this will work for us. So I think that's a great start. Thank you. Councilor Parker. Um, I don't believe we got answers to our questions. I want to know if the state would have any issues with this. Mr. Burke? The questions I had from our meeting, I didn't respond. I don't know what other ones you are, but Rick Norris did indicate he uh, did check with the state and there's, uh, they have no oversight over this and they have no issues or say in it. So. so he formally told you, but okay. He did reach out to the state. And then he does have a meeting set up with Groton Utilities just to discuss if there's any possibility of trying to do something on the Groton Utilities side. Okay, thank you. Seeing no further discussion, we will vote on 2019-805 installation of solar panels on new schools. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? I, I see, I see. So we have seven in favor, one opposed, Parker, and zero abstentions. That passes. And we are on to 2047. Assistant Director of Library Services on page 24, and I believe we're on Councilor Bordelon. A resolution approving a new job description entitled for Assistant Director of Library Services. Whereas the library began uh, reconstructing staff in 2016 within the library organization, Whereas the library would like to continue reconstruction in 2020 with the merging of the manager of curriculum and technical services portion and the manager of public service position. Whereas the library will then create the position of assistant director of library services with the merger. Uh, whereas the town manager concurs with the recommend, recommend, recommendation, I can't, recommends adoption <laughs> of the plan as submitted now there be it resolved that the town council approves the merger of manager of curriculum and technical services and the manager of public services positions and approves a new job description and the title of assistant director of library service i so move second second, second. Sorry. manager of circulation and technical services and the manager of public services very good any discussion on this item i'm sorry it was obrey moved by board line seconded by obrey <clears throat> Seeing no discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. Item 202040, endorsement of the Southeastern Connecticut Council of Governments Regional Performance Incentive Program applications on page 26, please. Councilor Zapari. Uh, resolution relating to the Regional Performance uh, Incentive Program grant application by SCCOG. Resolved that the Town of Groton hereby endorses and authorizes the Southeastern Connecticut Council of Governments, SCCOG, to make application to the Connecticut Office of Policy and Management, OPM, for Regional Performance Incentive Program, RP, uh, IP, funding for three projects, a regional code enforcement official, $100,000, a 
a regional grant writer, $80,000, and a regional human resources staff consultant, $80,000, all of which could, be could benefit the municipalities of the SCOOG region and be it further resolved that the Town of Groton authorizes the Council's Executive Director, James S. Butler, to make this, these applications and to execute and deliver the agreements on behalf of the Southeastern Connecticut Council of Governments and to do all things necessary and appropriate to carry out the terms of the agreement, including executing and delivering all agreements and documents contemplated by the agreement. I so move. Second. Moved by Zapari and seconded by Heed. Councilor Baumgartner. A quick question for the manager. Um, anytime the, um, you know, the town identifies an opportunity to, uh, you know, create cost savings, um, you know, with our regional partners, I think, you know, we ought to look at. Um, have you identified perhaps any of these um, positions that the town could collaborate with another municipality to and find those efficiencies? Well, of course, the uh, resilience one is one. Um, uh, not that I've, you know, they did a study and nothing was coming real easily. Uh, these are the main low-lying fruit, you know, the, you know, the grant writer is an opportunity. Uh, you know, I don't think there'll be enough for that person's time to go around for this position, but if it, if it catches on, it might expand and might add other positions. So this is just exploratory and we'll see where they go. Uh, a little too small of a program yet for us, though. It's not like you're going to, with one human resources person, and, you know, that's not going to go very far. So, but I am constantly keeping an eye on trying to find these cost sharing opportunities. Great, thank you. All right, um, we will vote on 202040, endorsement of the CCOG Regional Performance Incentive Program applications. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. We are on to other business. Seeing none, I'll entertain. Oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Baumgartner. Um, next week on the agenda, we'll, we will be discussing uh, Mystic Coastal Public Access. Right. Um, are there any uh, new developments with um, in terms of the uh, sign removal? Uh, yeah, well. But um, you'll be bringing them next week, yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't discuss the term things at this point, so. Okay. Right Thank you. I'm hoping for, we're getting two opinions. One that was already completed. I'm, Told there's a good chance of getting that cycle one wrapped up this week. And so it will only be the attorney presenting next week, uh, the town attorney. Yeah, not in public. Though. That's okay. something. The yeah, attorney's opinion seems to be done in executive session. We will say what we can say, but there's, it's premature at this point to do publicly. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I do think at some point we we need to have a public discussion about this. Definitely. Answer. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. We we spend a lot of money on attorneys' opinions. We definitely will go public with. <laughs> yeah. All right, very good. Councilor oh, can, can I add something oh. on, though, for coastal management, if that's okay? Yes. Uh, uh, planning staff and I did meet with the Mystic Museum of Art today. The uh, Susan Fisher, the executive director, and Bill, and blinking out is in Ferguson. He is the, I forget what his position is there, but he also happens to be the, whatever they call it, the president of the downtown merchants group um, to talk about one thing, the, the pathways through there, but also parking and Mystic. We had a really good conversation with them today. They are very keen on increasing foot traffic on the trail behind their um, facility there. They have some ideas of how they could take advantage of that. So that was a really good meeting. Great. Look forward to hearing more about that. Councilor Obrey. Um, I'd just like to suggest that from now on with the meetings that we make a point of reading who's donated money to the, to the town. I want to encourage more people to do it. So the better way to do it is to say thank you. Very good. I agree. Councilor Bordelon. Um, I was wondering, the rec building in Noank, um, there was talk that that only could be used for certain thing based on how it was deeded, right? Is that the Spicer House? The Spicer House, sorry, yes. Is there any more talk on that or any new developments? Yeah, there are restrictions in that deed as to how it can be used. Plus, you have Noank zoning there that's separate from town zoning. Um, the first hurdle is the, uh, the um, language, the revision language in there. Um, planning staff has reached out to, the revision language says if you're not following these rules, it reverts to, and I'm blinking on the conservation group, it would revert the property to. Conservatory. 
Um, but they're having discussions with them and their attorneys as to what would be allowed, um, their interpretation of that and not. So there is some, th there's some things happening, but there's nothing to report yet. Yeah. And Mr. Barry's coming in February, had a meeting in February? Gonna be, he's gonna be here a couple times. Uh, right. he's gonna, they're gonna be here next week to talk about athletic fields, and then they're gonna be back again mm -hmm. the second uh, cow to talk about a general update on the, on the um, parks and rec and uh, a couple other topics, I think. So maybe might. he could address it at that point? Well, it's been more planning staff at this point okay. um, on that reversion language. And I don't know if we'll have an answer from their attorney. We're really just waiting for this group's attorney, I think, to get back those. But I'll, I'll try to get the latest on that. Thank you. My end of that um, is I was wondering, you know, maybe there's a, we could use more arts in this town. I know Westerly's doing that huge development with that huge new theater coming in. Um, new London has the Guard Arts Theater. Um, as far as development goes and really kind of putting ourselves out there, it would be great to have some type of arts in our town that's, you know, driven. Maybe the Spicer building, if that ever vacated, I don't know if that would fit code, but there'd be a great to have a nice location in our town. There's nowhere really in our town where you can go and really take in the arts. And that's one of the things that we, I mean, there's pieces of it. Our high school does it, um, certain, but not a, we have, we have sections, but it, it that's very popular right now and needed, and um, I think it would be uh, uh, a great thing to maybe look towards. I don't know. I don't know if the Spicer, from a rec standpoint, could use that uh, Spicer building maybe towards something like that. Um, I don't know. Just a thought. And, and I would anticipate uh, once we know what restrictions we're locked in with, what things are allowed, mm -hmm. that we would go through a similar process as the schools, where mm -hmm. we have a group that ends up uh, putting out an RFP and looking yeah. at the options. Okay. And, Go from and there. my last thing is, is also it's Black History Month, and um, I do not see a lot of things in our town that we are doing to celebrate Black History Month as a as a town, and um, I'd love to brainstorm about that and kind of move forward to looking into doing stuff here in Groton. Thank you, Councilor Avery. Um, just in reference to that, was well, two things I'd like to mention. But if we want to have something like arts in Groton or yeah. other activities in Groton. <laughs> We're going to have to reach out to the community and ask them if they would uh, perhaps reestablish the Groton Business Association mm -hmm. or some group that's really caring about this part of Groton. Yeah. We don't have a force behind having things happen. Yeah. Uh, we, we had a great group and that's how some of the things that we have we enjoy now came about. But unless you have that and we do not have the support from the chamber to make it happen. so. We need to uh, try to reach out and see if there's anybody that would like to mm -hmm. initiate something. We would work with them and encourage them and do whatever we could do. But we're going to have to we're going to have to somehow stimulate that happening. Yeah. Councilor Baumgartner, I'm and sorry. I, I, and the other thing I just wanted to mention was I don't know if I've just not seen it or if this is something yeah. new from Public Works, but I thought it was excellent. Mm -hmm. They they do that routinely, um, and I I. Uh, Oh, that's, is that what, did you say planning or public works? This is public, public works. works. That's new with Craig. Yeah, that Very one's good. new. Yep. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you, for us. And, and um, uh, Chief Fasaro will be doing an update at the next cow, and uh, he's going to put together a little handout, too. I think, you know, trying to get everyone kind of used to giving some nice, <coughs> unpacked information to people. Councilor Bumgarner uh, and then to Perry. Quickly, I'd like to align my remarks with both um, Councilor Obrey and, and Bordelon. Um, and the Southeastern Connecticut Cultural Coalition is probably a great resource to tap into to identify, you know, partnerships. I know they'll be probably coming down our way again um, when it's time to, um, you know, talk about Make Music Day. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Very good. Councilor Zapari. I just, in terms of the arts, I know that we've had, uh, I, there's always room for more. But we have had concerts at Escapone. And we have an auditorium in our community center that should be available for performances should any group wish to have them. There are also have been performances at the senior center. So we're not completely uh, backward in that regard. As well as we also have the Mystic Art Association Correct. as well. Uh, Mr. Burton. Just to mention, we don't have an operator, operating uh, um, auditorium in the Correct. Uh, middle school. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. I, one thing I'm wrestling with is there's 7.5 million or so in requests for CIPs, and I need to get, you know, typically we try to get down under 3 million, so I'm not sure that's going to 
make my initial list of councils, of course, free to, to put it back in. Correct. <laughs> you said something right. about an opera. I'd be happy to sing in La Traviata. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so if, um, if there's going to be more discussion, I'm going to recess and I have to excuse myself. Um, and someone else will have to take over because I have to go home and moderate a discussion board for my students. Um, so um, is there going to be more discussion? Because if there will, I will recess and you can elect a mayor pro tem and motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Moved by Parker, seconded by Obrey. All those in favor of adjournment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? So moved unanimously. We are adjourned at 842. Thank you very much.